Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released watchOS 10.2 to the public. watchOS 10.2 is available around the world at the same time for everyone on all watchOS 10 supported devices. Now this update came in at 218 megabytes. That's fairly small, but has some nice updates and can vary in size depending on your watch. I'm using an Apple watch ultra two. Now this update has a bunch of different features and changes. And the first thing has to do with settings. Apple finally brought back a feature that we've had for a long time that they removed. We can now simply swipe between different watch faces instead of pressing and holding. Of course, you don't have to have this, but they've now enabled this within your settings. If we go into settings, then we go down to clock. So we'll just scroll down until we find clock here within clock you'll see swipe to switch watch face. If you have that enabled, you can now just simply swipe between your watch faces and go between whichever one you choose. So it's really nice. You can just go back and forth. Of course, you don't have to enable it if you don't want to. If you're using your Apple watch to work out and sometimes you find maybe you're working out and you accidentally bump the option to end the workout, you can now have it confirm that so you can't do it accidentally. So we can actually enable that by going into our settings if we go into settings, scroll all the way to the bottom where we have workout within workout, scroll down a little ways, and you'll see a new option where it says end workout confirmation underneath it. It says include a confirmation when ending a workout. If you have that enabled, we go back to our workout here and slide over tap end. it now has another confirmation to end the workout. So if you want to use that, it's now available. Another update has to do with Siri. Siri now has the ability to access health information and also log that data as well. So if we press and hold, how many steps did I walk yesterday? And you'll see it says 4,902 steps. How many calories did I burn yesterday? Again, it will say 140. I didn't wear my watch mostly yesterday this time around. Also, we can log information. Log that my blood sugar is 95. And I didn't test my blood sugar, but this is just an example. You can also log things such as your blood pressure. Record my blood pressure as 120 over 80. And you'll see it records it there. This can be found in the health app. Now, now I didn't recently test my blood pressure or blood sugar, but if we go into the health app, wait for it to load. And then we go to show all health data. You'll actually see my heart rate, my blood glucose here that it actually averages as I've done a couple different examples and then all of the other information as well. So anything that you record to it will be kept here and you'll see all of that information. So it's really helpful and something that they've updated. You don't have to allow it but you'll now have that option. If you have a home pod nearby and you're playing some music, there's a new update that will now show you what's playing with your Apple watch. When it's nearby, you can see it here. It will show the album artwork, although sometimes that takes a while to show up, but you can automatically view now playing directly on your Apple watch. When you're near a home pod, it has to be a home pod, second generation or a home pod mini though. Otherwise it won't work. It also is available on Apple watch series six and later, as well as Apple watch ultra one and two. If we're using our Apple watch to work out and maybe we're using fitness plus they've added some new options to prioritize the overall voice or music. So if we go into the fitness app and we're using fitness plus, we'll just scroll down. We'll select a random workout here. So maybe we'll go into cycling, give it a second tap. Let's go. And in the bottom, right, we have our three dot menu and you'll see a new option for audio focus. We can now select between the trainer and music. So if we want to prioritize the music over the trainer's voice or back and forth, whatever works best for us, we can do that. If you use messages or iMessage like I do, there's a new option for contact key verification. This allows you to verify who you're messaging is who they say they are. This can be enabled on the iPhone again. So if we go into our settings, it can be found in the messages app. But if you go into settings, tap your name at the top, then under Apple ID, we scroll to the bottom. You'll see contact key verification. If we turn this on, you'll see it says contact key verification allows you to manually verify who you are messaging with by comparing contact verification codes in person or over the phone. We can enable this, but it has to be on all of our devices. So you need to be updated so that you can enable it. But once you're updated, you'll be able to use that and then verify that information is who they actually say they are. That's texting you. So if you have someone that's sort of a critical contact, that will be very helpful. Also, if we're using name drop, they've updated the animation. You'll see here that it sort of stays a little bit longer in the middle. It's just directly in the middle of the watch. Again, if I bring this close. You can see the animation there. It's a slight change. looks really great and vibrates the phone quite a bit and the watch. So you know that there's information coming into the watch.
They've also resolved some issues with this update. One thing that they've actually mentioned is that there's an issue where watch faces that were added in the watch app on iPhone sometimes wouldn't appear on the iPhone. So if you're in the watch app on the iPhone, you go to your face gallery, and then maybe you want to add a watch it takes a moment to load here. Maybe we want to watch add the breathe watch face go in. Now it adds right away before. Sometimes it was a little bit of an issue. This has been fixed in this update. Watch OS 10.2 also includes security updates. If we go to Apple's security releases website, I'll link that in the description. You'll see all of the latest releases with iOS 17.2 and more. And if we go to watch OS 10.2, there's actually eight updates here. We have updates to accounts, extension kit, image IO kernel and web kit. And if you want to read this, maybe on image IO, you'll see the impact or the issue was processing an image may lead to arbitrary code execution. The description is how they fixed it. The issue was addressed with improved memory handling. And then they actually give the CVE numbers and people that contributed to helping find the overall issue with security. So those are updated. I would definitely recommend installing watch OS 10.2. If you haven't already, not just for the new features and bug fixes, but also the security updates that are important as well. As far as overall performance, well, it seems to be nice and fast overall. Of course, this is the latest Apple watch, but if we go into maybe the compass here, you'll see it loads nice and fast different apps. I don't use all the time. Weather seems to load nice and quickly as well. It's very quick, very responsive. And in general, really, I haven't had any issues whatsoever in watch OS 10.2, especially with the latest betas and the RC version. As far as overall battery life, I have heard reports for some people that it's actually pretty poor. I haven't experienced that at all. You'll see I'm at 70% and it was around 80% not long ago, but in general, it seems to be holding up well for me. If you work out a lot, you may see worse battery life, at least for some people. So if we go into our battery settings, we'll go back into settings here. We'll go down to battery. And within battery, we'll take a look at the battery health. My Apple watch series one or my Apple watch ultra one rather actually lasted a full year and was still at 100%. And you'll see I'm currently at 100% now. So it's holding up well there and in general seems to be doing just fine. You'll see last charge to optimize limit two hours ago. It's gone down 10% since. So not really any issues there. The screen's been on a lot and I've been using it. So it gets me through a couple days. Typically, if you're working out a lot and using it for music, that can actually reduce that to about a day and a half on the Apple watch ultra. Now, as far as watch OS 10.3 beta one, I would expect that probably within a couple days at this point, usually they release it a day or so after the public versions come out. And then we won't have another update until mid January. Typically the second week of January, we'll get some sort of update with that. So not a lot as far as this particular update goes, but we could see some more features with watch OS 10.3 beta one, and then probably watch OS 11 as well. So we'll have some major updates, but that won't be shown until June. As far as this watch band, many people ask about this. This is actually a nomad watch band. I'll link it in the description. And as far as the watch face I'm using, we'll press and hold here and you'll see it's the modular watch face. If I go in and edit and go to the complication here, you'll see this is actually called Lumi. It shows golden hour in the countdown to either sunset or whatever you want to set it to. But this tells you when it's basically the best time to take photos and video. So I just like the way it looks. I have it here. Of course I have my calendar music the compass, then the weather, and then messages in the upper left. So that's everything as far as the watch face and everything with watch OS 10.2. If you've found anything else I haven't mentioned in this video, as far as features or bug fixes, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.